Hey guys, this is Fernando doing another video for More Survivalists. This is one of those videos that you really should give me a moment in of, of your time and watch because it is it is not flashy, it is not nothing, nothing uh, cool or anything like that, but it's very real in, in terms of how likely it is for you to be in this same situation. I a couple days ago I got. Um, I got busy with, with my life insurance uh, policy. Turns out that about two weeks ago, give or take, I received an, an email from my, um, my life insurance company saying that um, they wouldn't be able to pay outside of Argentina. I had my life insurance uh, policy in Argentina. I checked with them if it, was, uh, if it would be paid abroad if something happened to me turns out they got back to me no it's it, it would only be paid in Argentina that means that it would be paid in Argentina in, in in pesos right and you pretty much would not have any way of getting it out of the country so that was just not acceptable anymore life insurance is one of those things that if you don't have it you really should get it so I I was talking with, with these folks from uh, from a, a local life insurance company um, yesterday. Yesterday, just yeah, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday. I answered all the medical questions that I usually have. Um, piece of advice: if you if you're gonna be getting life insurance anytime soon and such, uh, you have to answer those questions are critical. Any little thing that you say that is not 100% correct. Anything you, f you forget to mention may make the difference between your family getting the money at the worst possible moment when they need it the most or not. Any pain in your chest, any medical thing that you had, absolutely anything that you could possibly think of that they're asking at could, could be related anyway. It's, ra it's much more better to go on the side of, uh, of caution and go you know beyond what you th you think uh, is needed if you had the slightest uh, thing that could possibly compromise your your report your policy go right ahead and say that and le uh, let them decide if it's a problem or not because if you don't if you fail at that you're going to be using that not to pay um, the life insurance companies they don't make money by paying people they make money by collecting uh, their the, the money and not exactly paying to <laughs> everyone that comes by in, uh, looking for it so what ends up happening is that when when you make a claim when something happens to you they will have a group of people that will go out there looking to see where you either lied where you forgot to mention something that you should have mentioned happens all the time people that don't end up getting paid because they forgot something that was important. Uh, don't be one of those guys. Mention absolutely everything that you think is relevant and answer those questions as, as truthfully as possible within your, your knowledge, okay? Uh, so, having this, uh, this happened, this, this morning I received a call from, from the company. They said that I, uh, my wife and I had been approved based on the questions that we had answered and that is, as of right now we had uh, life insurance uh, again so uh, then you know good at the same time this was a, a phone call about 8 30 p.m. a.m. this morning and the, this this same morning I was having breakfast and going through some of the emails and I found one that said uh, something about life insurance and I thought it was um, I thought it was an email uh, a follow-up email uh, of a company that they had approved me as such I clicked on it and it, it actually wasn't it was a completely different uh, matter. Uh, an email from one of, of you folks, uh, one of uh, my my YouTube viewers. Actually, it's one of of the few nicknames on YouTube that I do remember because he's always uh, a nice guy and uh, has uh, positive things to comment and very very encouraging. So I, I do remember your your nickname in YouTube. In fact. And well, I'm going to be reading it to you guys, of course, not mentioning who he is, because he asked for, of course, not to be mentioned. Uh, Hi, Fairfield, you know me as well. 
uh, on YouTube. About six months ago, my girlfriend died from a massive arctic aneurysm. She was only 30 years old and was 7.5 months pregnant with our son. Because of our age, we've never thought to get a well done for each of us. Uh, it was a big mistake. Uh, thankfully, our son survived and is okay. Since we were only common law and had no wills or power of attorney, I had to go to court for custody of my son and almost had to pay a thousand bucks for a DNA test. Also, since she died and I've been looking after my son, I've been stuck living off parental leave, which really sucks since it's about one third of what I made as a primary breadwinner of my family. I go back to work in October and will be fine, but life insurance would have been nice for my son and I to use as a buffer for the short term. I write this not for sympathy, but as a warning for other prepper survivalists. I, I spend way too much time worrying about car crashes, about wildfires, and not about the possibility of a personal SHTF scenario. Instead of getting our affairs in order, just in case we pass away, we concentrate on buying gear and stuff, things that we will never die of, thinking that we will never die of natural causes and out of luck. I think all people in the self-reliance movement should at least have a will and if they can afford it, life insurance to help any loved ones in the event of their demise. Please keep my name and uh, out of any YouTube videos and of articles. Uh, thank you, bud. And that is it. Uh, man, I, I cannot explain how, how sorry I am for what, what happened to you. How It always seems to be you know, the nicest people. Um, but he's absolutely right. You just never think of, especially when, when we start talking about survival and preparedness, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I do make an emphasis on always keeping it real. You're going to be dying out of a heart attack, you're going to be dying because of cancer, and it's so much more overwhelmingly more likely than getting killed by raiders, getting killed or dying of a famine, uh, or or dying because of zombies attacking you or whatnot, the, especially since uh, preparedness and survival has become mainstream media, it has been tainted to a way in which it's focused more on th on things that are entertaining, like talking about you know all these things or focusing on on guns and, and their use, which you know yeah it is it is fine and all, and I do cover that quite quite often too. But it often misses the big picture, which is the, the fact that we all are so much more likely to go through this kind of stuff than uh, fighting it off uh, after a nuclear disaster with mutants or, or whatever. It is, it is stuff like this that it happens every day, all day long, all around the world, and to a much, much a greater degree than anything that is very flashy, looks good on camera, looks very entertaining in Discovery Channel or History Channel or even YouTube channels, but um, you know it is not really that likely to happen compared to all this stuff. So yeah, yeah man, I cannot, you know, you, you think a uh, 30 years old, but this this stuff happens. You do need to get your your affairs in order, as our, our friend here was, was saying. Um, a will simplifies things quite a bit. You make your, you make your, your, um, your views, your opinions, your will known when you're not here anymore makes everything so much easier. Even getting married, which uh, these days seems to be a little bit out of fashion, um, it's not only useful in the case of, uh, of, of this um, viewer that was emailing me, um, you know, since you don't have, um, it is, it's all pretty much automatic. When, when you're legally married, uh, your kids and all, it's, it's not a, as, as complicated. It's really not that complicated if something happens to one of the parents. Also the case of, for example, let's suppose you, you decided to start a family with someone, your, your wife, your husband, uh, you have kids, you get along fantastically well, but, but for some reason you just didn't marry. Um, when you leave, if, if you ever leave your country and one of you has a residency or one of you uh, gets a job, it is much harder to get a, a residency and, and, 
and explain the legal status of your partner if you're not married. Yes, you know, you see this a lot, people saying, well, it's just a piece of paper, we love each other, the piece of paper really doesn't matter. The piece of paper is actually a very important legal document that, yes, of course, it's, it's a huge mess if your marriage doesn't work and you get divorced and all that, and lots and lots of people regret having got having gotten married but there's also a lot of people that regret not having not getting married and when when they actually need that that document that legal document in in life insurance absolutely i mean it is in back in argentina it was one of my greatest fears of what happens to my family if something happens to me um because of all the, the crime thing and such one of my main concerns was uh, what happens if something happens to me on the street, if, if I get hurt, if I get shot or whatnot. And um, I was uh, studying and working both in the University of Buenos Aires in Ciudad Universitaria uh, late at night. The, the classes would end at about 11 p.m. and when, when you're the teacher you don't actually get to leave early or anything like that. You have to stay there and answer all the questions. Any student that has a, a question later you have to uh, take your time. So I would drive back home through some very bad parts of, of the suburbs of Buenos Aires is through General Paz, then through Camino Negro, back to the south of the, the southern suburbs, uh, about 12 p.m., 1 a.m. And man, you know, you would wonder, what, what if something happens to me? And how would your family uh, get by when you're not there to provide for them anymore? So... Yes, life insurance, at the very least, uh, get enough uh, life insurance coverage for, for your youngest child uh, to be old enough to take care of himself. That's the, like the, the basic minimum that it's often advised and recommended. At least enough for your youngest child to be about 21, 25, give or take. So if, if the worst ever happens, at least he's old enough to maybe finish a, a, a education and get a, a foot on, on things in the world. Uh, of course, if you can provide for more than that, that that's even better. But, um, yeah, you know, it, it sucks that in, a, in such a, a, a hard moment in life, you know, you don't think about these things, but in such a hard moment of life, having to worry besides that, having to worry about making a living, making money to sustain yourself and, and your family, that's, that's a huge, huge blow. So, well, you know, in my prayers for you, dude, uh, I, I cannot imagine what you might be going through right now. Uh, I won't even pretend to understand how, how painful it is, but uh, still thanks for, uh, for sharing uh, your, your experience and, and understanding that maybe there's other people out, out there that haven't thought about this and are maybe making a mistake that they would hugely regret later on. Things uh, like life insurance are, are extremely important. If you don't have life insurance, you really shouldn't be spending money on anything else. If you don't, if you're buying thousands of rounds of ammo and you don't have life insurance, you, you don't quite get the, the, the picture here. Life insurance is, is huge. You don't have to be you're not going to be only dying when you're 70 years old, 80, 90. It happens to young people all the time. You just have no, no one has life uh, bought, uh, as we say. It, it, it's, it's just not the way it works. So it is essential. Instead of, of focusing on things that are very unlikely to happen, focus on things that are more, much more likely to happen like this. Uh, life insurance, house insurance. What if you get robbed, if, if there's a fire, you lose all, all your stuff or your, your home. Uh, cri even critical illness insurance sometimes, and this again, this happens a lot. Uh, people that you, you suffer a stroke, you, you have some illness or an accident and you don't die, so the insurance company is not paying, but you're left in a position where you're not able to provide for your family anymore. In, in that case, uh, you know, insurance would make a huge difference as well. Would make a huge difference. You're not dead, so insurance isn't paying anything. You're just uh, in, in a point where you're not able to work anymore, provide for your family anymore, and you really, really need the money there. So, you know, all things to, to keep in mind. Papers, your, your legal documents. If you are certain about starting a, a family with someone and you're 100% sure, 
then do get married do get the legal document that uh, vouches for what's what's going on there the, the proof that you're actually husband and wife um, one day it may make a huge difference in in your life uh, again this is something that many of you guys especially those that got divorced are, are regretting hugely having gotten married but I know quite a bit of people that they they later had problems getting you know maybe even getting loans getting their uh, legal status after, after moving abroad or, or whatnot there's so many cases in which the legal document uh, of you being married has um, you know it, it's pretty much in, in, invaluable for you makes it easier to prove the relationship so guys that's that's basically it it's uh it's not an easy topic it is not a pleasant topic to talk about but it is very real and it is so often overlooked so keep all this in mind guys take care have a great day and see you on our next video